Butler. I'm from the Department of Informatics, same as Amanda, who you heard before the break. And actually, my daughter is in the audience today, so I'll embarrass her a little bit. Hi, Naomi. <laughs> um, and what I'm going to talk about today is why was I late for school today? Or how to define precisely what I need. So what do I do? What is my research about? My research is about how to check correctness of computerized systems, which are systems that have computers inside. So nowadays, almost everything around us has computers inside. Software, hardware, so even the coffee machine has little computer chip inside. And uh, you're, all, you're all using laptops and the desktop computers every day. And in fact, computers are also responsible for many, many important and critical systems around us, such as, for example, train signaling and utilities, water and electricity, basically everything. So it's very, very important that those systems function correctly. Because if they don't, then the results might be major, may, minor minor results, such as coffee machines squirting coffee at you, or major disasters, such as train collisions. So obviously, it's a very, very difficult problem how to check correctness of computerized systems. So obviously, first of all, it's difficult because those systems are huge, and they're getting larger and larger every single day. So this is an example of a chip. See, it's, it's a tiny picture, but you can see how complicated and all the wiring. Computer software programs are enormous. I can't even put a screenshot of a program on the screen. But surprisingly, another reason about, of why it is so hard to check correctness of those computer assistance is because we don't always know what correct means. Now you say, come on, what do you mean I don't know, always know what correct means? How can it be? So the description of correctness of a system is called the specification. And in order to check whether our system is correct, the specification should be exactly what we want to check. It should be correct and full. So it's very difficult to explain about the, the specifications on those large computer chips and programs. So we're going to look at a very simple example, which is, why was I late to school today? So why was I late to school today? My clock didn't, my alarm clock didn't ring. Hmm, why does it ring? I'm sure I said it to 7 a.m. Okay, what do we need in order to not be late to school? Okay, let's think together. First try, I need my alarm clock to ring. Cool, this is your specification. Here you go. How about this one? This is a kitchen timer. You can set it to one hour maximum, and it will ring. Is it a good solution? Okay, so if you use the kitchen timer in place of the alarm clock, in the morning, you will look like this. <laughs> Why? Come on, it rings, right? This is what you asked for. Yes, but it rings every hour. I just wanted to ring at 7 a.m. Aha, uh -huh. so you didn't define what you need correctly, right? This specification was wrong. It was not precise enough. Okay, okay, fine. Now I understand what you're talking about. Let me try again. I needed to ring at 7 a.m. Okay, cool. How about this solution? I'll give you a mysterious box without buttons with 7 a.m. engraved on the leaf. Is this a good solution? Well, the ring at 7 a.m. This is what you asked for. Okay, if you use an alarm clock, the ring at 7 a.m. every day cannot be set up. Right? 7 a.m. is engraved on the lid. What's going to happen is this. Monday. Fine. Tuesday. Fine. Wednesday. 7 a.m. Great. Thursday. Good again. Friday. Working wonderful so far. And... Oops, Saturday. Oh, come on. If you wake me up at 7 a.m. on Saturday, I will look like this. <laughs> and probably you will do too. So, okay, fine, 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 I understand. I get ahead the problem with my specification. Let me try again. Third try. If I set the alarm clock, it will ring at 7 a.m. Okay, how about this? How did it? Fine, sounds good. Here is your reliable alarm clock. Electronic reliable alarm clock. By the way, do you know how hard it is to construct a reliable alarm clock? I promise you it's a simple example, so we're not going to talk about it in more detail. But in fact, if you ask, come on, how hard can it be to construct a reliable alarm clock? Well, it can be very, very hard. The batteries can be empty in the middle of the night. If you connect it to a central tower, 
They can be sense of our failure. Or if you're using iTunes, there are many bugs and many grumpy people did not wake up using iTunes. Or if you want the alarm clock to play a song from your favorite digital song library and the song was deleted, again, it will not wake you up. But let's ignore it. It's too complicated for this lecture. Let's ignore it and say that we have a perfect, reliable alarm clock. If you set the alarm clock up, it will ring at 7 a.m. Okay, wonderful, sounds good. Monday. <coughs> Perfect. It works on Monday, it works on Tuesday, it works on Wednesday, it works on Thursday, it works on Friday. Is it a good solution? Sounds good so far. Uh, wait a second, wait a second. What happens if I don't set it up? Yes, exactly. What happens if I don't set it up? What happens on Saturday? Okay, now I'm worried. Because I didn't actually specify what happens on Saturday. So anything can happen on Saturday. For example, Yeti can come to visit you and growl at 7 a.m. Okay, so I would be unhappy if Yeti comes to visit me on Saturday and growl at 7 a.m. Okay, fine. I understand my specification was still not good enough. Fourth try. If I set the alarm clock to 7 a.m., it will ring at 7 a.m. If I don't set the alarm clock, it will not ring. Okay? Is it good enough now? Sounds good? So, Saturday. No alarm set. Because this is what we required. We have peaceful weekends now. Everything goes great. Wonderful. Okay, so on the fourth try with the alarm clock, we managed to get a great specification, which was a great achievement. So why am I still late for school? Aha. So now that we have the correct specification, let's look at what happens in reality. So, is it a school day tomorrow? Yes. School day tomorrow, I will set the alarm clock. The alarm clock rings and wakes me up. This is exactly what we If it's not good, well, you're obviously very happy you going to school, you always look at this. Um, on Saturday, you don't set the alarm clock, it doesn't ring. Wonderful. The problem is that when you consider the system, you did not consider the whole system here. You have to consider the alarm clock and what we call its environment. Its environment is you. And if you forget to set the alarm clock, it will not ring and you will be late for school. Again. So, we need to correct specifications and we need to consider the correct systems. And what do we do exactly in this case? So, in this case we need what we call fault tolerance. Fault tolerance is the concept where you put several mechanisms in place, several systems, to do the same thing, so that they back up each other. In this particular case, what can you do to help yourself with the alarm clock for the cases when you forget to set it up? You should ask your parents. If you ask your parents to wake you up, they wake you up on time and you will not be late for school. So, on some days you will set the alarm clocks and your parents will wake you up, so you will be woken up twice. Well, no harm is done. If you forget to set the alarm clock, your parents will wake you up and you will again not be late for school. Fall tolerance. On, sometimes your parents will forget, but hopefully you will set the alarm clock on those days and will not be late for school. And we hope that this fault tolerance is good enough so that both failures will not happen at the same time. Or at least will happen very rarely. So that you will never be late for school, almost never be late for school again. So, thank you, and I hope you are never late for school again.